So let's hear from Ben. Hey, thank you. Um, so I want to start actually with the in honor of the state of now with a piece of advice that a friend once gave me, which was, if you have one foot in the past and one foot in the future, you're going to piss all over the present, which is something I've tried to operate by for a long time. So I'm Jen Hallweil, and I am going to be speaking about a docu-series I'm working on called Beyond the Boundary of how we shift the focus of women in STEM. So in 2006, the president of Harvard University was at a conference where he said that the reason there might not be more women in STEM is because of intrinsic differences where men might just be better at math and science innately. Yeah, wasn't the best remark ever made. Um, so Sally Ride, who was the first female American astronaut, had this wonderful, brilliant response. She said, imagine you see a woman lying on the floor gasping for breath, and she has an elephant on her chest. You could assume a panic attack, maybe heart attack, maybe asthma, but more likely than not, it's just the elephant on her chest. If you remove it, she'll breathe just fine. The elephant on most women's chests right now is the mistaken misperception that we're not as good at math and science, and the myth that we have not contributed anything of note to scientific and technological progress. So I'm a former electrical engineer. I used to work in renewable energies, so Elon Musk is a huge, huge hero of mine, I'm sure for a lot of you guys right now, hopefully. Um, and I was really excited when a year ago I got to tour SpaceX. Then I was immediately less excited because as I was going around the facility, I realized that all of the conference rooms were named after male astronauts and male scientists. And so I asked my self-proclaimed feminist friend, who is an engineer, why he thought this was the case. And his response was, well, you know, women only got the right to vote like 100 years ago, and you guys only joined the workforce a couple decades ago, so you haven't really had a chance to contribute anything of note to math or science yet. Unfortunately, he could not be more wrong. So without the contributions of people like Ava Lovelace, who was a mathematician in the 1800s, or Grace Hopper, who built one of the early computers, or even Katherine Johnson, who was a NASA physicist, space travel might not be possible, and my friend might not have a job at SpaceX. And how many of you guys know who Hedy Lamarr is? Yeah. Show of hands. Oh, good. So what do you guys know about her? Yeah, so we actually have some great people in this audience. But if you, if you pull the average person and you ask them who she is, they know her as a famous actress and a Hollywood starlet. The reality is, is that she developed this frequency hopping technology that is the basis for all modern Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And in fact, she saved our butts during the Cuban Missile Crisis because that same technology is what allowed the Navy to jam-proof the torpedoes. So why do women's stories get left out of this narrative of technological progress? Well, they did a really interesting study two years ago where they gave a scientific panel a pile of resumes and they asked them to rate how qualified they thought candidates would be. Um, what they didn't know is that a number of the resumes were duplicates with one minor adjustment. They would either say Jennifer Smith or John Smith at the top, some variation with the name flipped and the gender flipped. And what they found was that overwhelmingly the scientific panel thought that the male applicants were more qualified than their female counterparts when even the resumes and the qualifications were exactly the same. So we have this implicit bias, right? And it, it plays out in a way that we see men get tenure faster than women. We see them get published more than women. And so they work their way up the ranks of the engineering and the scientific community more than women. And as a result, women's stories kind of fall to the bottom. Stephanie Shirley is this tech innovator from the UK who in the 1960s built an all-female software company. And the way she had combated this implicit bias is she would sign all of her correspondence S. Shirley, her first initial and last name. And she would conduct most of her business in writing. So a majority of her customers never even knew she was a woman. Interestingly enough, J.K. Rowling used this same strategy to give us Harry Potter. So initially she sent out her book and it had Joanne as her name. And after getting dozens and dozens of rejections, she shortened it to J.K. Rowling, and now we have Harry Potter today. So Stephanie Shirley, the tech innovator, has this great um, TED talk that you guys should all go watch, 
where she asks, why are women's heads flat? And apparently it's because we keep getting patted on the head patronizingly. Personally, I thought it was because we keep hitting the glass ceiling, but that's another story for another time. So I think the real question becomes, if we're going to tell stories about women in science, you know, what kinds of stories do we want to tell? And I think it starts with shifting the narrative, right? So the women's equality movement, the suffrage, began, it began in the 1850s. And that's, interestingly enough, around the same time that the second industrial revolution happened. So the idea is that as more women have joined the workplace and come into the communities, we have seen this technological explosion. And yet, for some reason, we don't tell that story as those two things are linked. In fact, women's contributions to tech and science are, are mostly left out of the national dialogue. We get biopics like Imitation Game, where we learn about Alan Turing and computer programming, or The Theory of Everything, where we learn about Stephen Hawking. But what we need are biopics about Ada Lovelace, and Grace Hopper, and Sally Ride. And um, how many of you guys know about hidden figures? Oh, one hand. OK, we're going to change that. So January 6th, all of you guys need to go see this film called Hidden Figures. It is about a group of African-American female mathematicians whose work was instrumental in helping our first NASA space flights. And those are the kinds of stories that we need people to hear about. And um, obviously, we need to get the word out so people actually go see them and they don't tank at the box office. Um, I also think that we need to change our archetypes, right? So in, uh, the er in the early 80s, we had MacGyver. And it galvanized a generation to go enroll in engineering. A decade ago, we had Iron Man. And it did the same thing for the millennials and the Gen Z. I think we need a, a Miss MacGyver and a female Iron Man. Maybe not those exact characters, but something in those archetypes to inspire the next generation of female entrepreneurs and to point out that we're not some kind of mythical unicorn if we're a woman that's good at math and science or some magical anachronism, but that this is actually very normal. And then lastly, I'm working on a docu-series called Beyond the Boundary, where we're highlighting the groundbreaking work that women are doing um, in scientific breakthroughs. So we have people like Tabitha Boyajian who are scouring the universe to find exoplanets that could host life. We have Katrina Moons who is 3D mapping the human brain for interactions. We have Emily Levesque who may have just discovered the first quantum star that was originally theorized by Einstein and if it's true fundamentally changes our understanding of how matter is created. I think now more than ever in light of recent events we need champions, we need platforms, and we need storytellers who are willing to win over the hearts and minds of the American people. So I think right now the best thing that we can do is to give a voice to that through the amplification process of telling these stories. Amplification, for those of you who know in engineering, is when you increase something, right? So if you turn up the volume on your stereo, you're amplifying the signal so we can all hear it more. And when Obama first came into office, two-thirds of his staffers were men. So what the women did to get their voice amplified is that a woman would make a suggestion and the other women in the community would echo that suggestion and cite the original author. We need to do the same thing for women in science. We need to amplify their voices so that we can inspire the next generation of technological innovation. Thank you.